I am the person who would be justified to hate the world because I lost everybody. I lost 35 people in Auschwitz and even if I want to forget the Holocaust I can't because I am carrying with my name. I was hating so much when I spent six years in prison camp only I just wanted to come back to Hungary in the top of a tank and just to kill everybody. Only when I came back in 1947, August 11, I found out how I lost all of my people, my family, my father, my mother, my grandparents. And uh, as I said, uh, my name was Alfred Goldstein. And I had a brother, his name was Tibor Goldstein, and he was a doctor. And when uh, in 1945, when the Hungarians were retreating front of the Russian, successful Russian army, the German and Hungarians were retreating in the West, the people who were in the military the forced labor battalioners who were very sick and very weak and they holded back the army and they decided that they put them into the sick people they are putting into the camp. And my brother, because my brother was a doctor, he stayed with the sick people to taking care of them. Only the next day the military decided they are going to get rid of the Jews and they shot everybody, including my brother. And my other brother who stayed alive, two of us survived. We decided for the human action of what my brother did, we changed our name and we took from his first name, we took to us for our family name. We dropped the Goldstein and he changed it to Tibor. That's why I said if I would like to forget the Holocaust, I can't because I am carrying with my name. Only the reason what is my background, that's why I am doing the work, what I am doing because I believe the humanity and the human race could survive only one way, if we would respect each other and we love each other. Actually, the human being was created in the way the arm natural movement is to embrace each other. And this is what I would like to tell with my pieces, with my work, and this is the reason I am working like that. That's why I am a little bit different kind of artist than other artists, because I have a background which no other artist has. And my thinking the way how I am working and how I would like to change the whole world to embrace each other. Because this is the way we survive. If we are going to make differences in the human race and we are going to project hatred, we are going to destroy the whole world. No other way we could survive, and this is my meaning of my art. Just if we are respecting each other and we are embracing each other. Just a statement, I could, would like to tell you that every mother has the same pain how they are bringing up an innocent child into the world. It makes no difference, black and white, or Catholic or Jews, they all have the same pain. 
only how we are upbringing that young human being how we are going to teach them and how we are going to raise them and what family we are going to have this is our aim and this is the way I would like to talk to with my art because this is the way I am expressing myself and this is the reason why I am an artist what I am today. And that's why I am grateful to you if you are taking this on the tape because I would like to speak whenever I am not going to be here. Now actually this is my working piece. The idea I am putting in, and it doesn't take too long to create that piece. Only the important is, if I wouldn't have this little model, I wouldn't make it able to do it in a large scale. The idea is behind it, because my thought is on that piece, how it's going to look like when it is finished. And because it is just a two or three hour work, I could finish a piece in a small scale and I have the conclusion. If I would uh, work the original piece in a large scale, it would take weeks and months and I would lose, lose the concept. The concept is in my mind on the moment when I am creating. And that's why I am making these little small pieces. And if you would like to, we could go out and to see how I am following exactly the same shape in a large scale. Actually, I am having here three kind of materials. One is marble, the other is bronze, and the third one is the bonded bronze. The bounded bronze is strictly economy. It's much cost less than the bronze. I don't have to use foundry. And that's the whole idea. I would like the people to enjoy my work who doesn't have such a deep pocket. So, for example, a bronze piece, if we looking at, for example, this second step, it cost me to produce at about $15,000, that bronze piece. Only I have this in bounded bronze and I could sell it for 6000 And uh, it is certainly a big difference between, between the two, only the look is the same. It's withstanding the weather and if somebody wants just a a shape or they are enjoying the piece they could have it actually I am saying or if you would like to have jewelry you are getting in bronze if you want to have a custom jewelry just which is, looks like jewelry you could have it in bonded bronze and again this one is I am appreciating the people who are selecting my work and if they can afford that and they don't have so much money they could get in a most reasonable way. This one is bounded bronze. I am making an armature and I am putting in a mesh wire and I am building up the shape and after I am putting a finished coat in pulverized bronze. The pulverized bronze is grinded bronze mixed with epoxy and it is the surface is bronze. And here I have to clean from the cobweb. And this one is turning also has a movement. And there I have another piece 
That one is a group of people. This is a religious piece. It's called Dominion. It's uh, the uh, congregants. Ten congregants are praying because in the Jewish faith you have to have ten men to able to pray. And I have this upstairs in bronze and I have this here in uh, fiberglass and bounded bronze. Matter of fact, I sold that piece already three times. It is one, one is in uh, Cleveland, one it is in Miami, and uh, one is in uh, Indianapolis. And that's withstanding the weather also, and it is the identical of the bronze. I'm going to show it to you upstairs, I have the bronze. And this one, again, it is the importance of that piece, the faces. Usually I am not making faces on my piece. Only when I want to express the expressions, and here really I am showing these people are praying. And that's the important, that's why I am showing the faces so vividly what they are doing. This is uh, again, this is Jewish, only it is connected with humanity. The treasure means we are keeping the scroll the Torah, which is the Moses five books, is content, the Moses five books. And here I am emphasizing with the finish, the man is the same finish than the Torah. It means it's not divided. The, the Torah and the human race is one, and the prayer shall is covering both. And that's, that's the meaning of that piece. And it was also, you can see it, how it is the pedestal. It was a bulk, big marble piece. And it is approximately a 10 to 12 months work until it uh, created that shape. In the human feelings even to their religion because the religions supposed to supposed to express humanity and this one is the called the second step i sold out i have the first step in a small scale when uh, the mother or Somebody is holding the baby, that's the first step. And here the baby is coming to you, that's why I'm calling it is the second step. And all of my pieces are dealing with humanity and all the aspect of the life I should uh, and I would like to put it into bronze. I am the sculptor who are not having style. If you see that piece, which is the first flight, and you are looking the other one, the, the man with the little boy and the balloon, he has faces, because this is the important the expression, they are together they are enjoying each other and they are talking to each other that's why i put it that the faces otherwise i am putting just generally the human beings i am not making faces because i don't want to show just one certain kind of human race if i start to make faces without any reason Somebody would come up, why you are making just Caucasian? Why don't you make 
Indians or why don't you make blacks or why don't you make yellow so that's why generally I am just making the shape and that way I am expressing all the human beings and that's the reason why I don't have actually a style usually the artists who are having a style they are repeating themselves they start for example Henry Moore when he was discovered he started to make certain shape and that's the way he made it all of them and he was repeating himself if I would uh, take you to the gallery inside I would uh, show you side by side if you are looking you would have a question in your mind which I have all the time these questions from people when I am exhibiting they are asking where are the artists in plural because they don't think one modern piece which I exhibit and one realistic is coming from the same hand so that's why it is uh, I am making the statement in my art I have to have and present the inner feeling of my work that's why I call this one is the first flight a mother is playing with her daughter and swinging around and they are enjoying to being together matter of fact this piece is the number one in Worthington Green it's in in Columbus Ohio this is the first piece which uh, was purchased in a public money That's the title is The Happy Time. This is called the Ribbon Dancer. All, if you are noticing, all of my pieces are in a move. I don't like standing, standing pieces. Every statue has to move. The pose is, gives a movement. The title is free and it is the handkerchief is uh, expressing the freedom only actually the reason is one of the favorite of mine because I got a call about six or seven years ago and the gentleman was calling from Santa Monica California and he said Mr. Tibor, I saw your work in a magazine and I love it and I would like to purchase one. And I thought if somebody is calling from California, they should uh, deserve to come and I invited him to come to my place and that way you could uh, select whatever you would like to. Only he said, no, I am not going to do that just send me some slides and I select one and I send it to him about five slides and he called me and he said Mr. Tibor I am selecting the free you could send it to me and uh, that way he purchased that was the first time in my life when I sold the piece through a slide which came from Carrara 
and uh, it is one and only. Actually, my favorite is the Carrara marble. Actually, the marble, not just only the Carrara. The marble is a challenging. When you are having a big piece of bulk stone in, in front of you and uh, you are creating a piece which is uh, in your mind and usually my system, how I am making the pieces I am making in a small scale, what it is in my mind and uh, usually this is a quarter inch scale and I am making the creation in a small scale and I am looking that little scale when I am carving the piece and I could show it to you right now what I am working on is also a Carrara marble and I have the little scale how I am finishing the piece so I know already how it's going to look like and that's the important and here is the challenge when from a dead bulk marble piece you are creating something which is meaningful and giving you a feel and giving you a purpose why you are looking at and what you are looking for example this one is the hope she is looking forward to the unknown and that's the one of the most important aspect of in human life to having hope without hope we wouldn't exist and actually without the believing I am going to survive I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't have the hope that's why I am projecting so many times the hope is my my favorite team actually because this is the way I exist I wouldn't exist if I wouldn't have the hope so actually this is the way I am going to make two kinds of work, one I am going to use the Very careful, you have to be with direction you are hitting it. Because you could hit 
and it, the piece is gone. When uh, Here is the piece which I am going to bring out when it's going to be finished. Only you have to be very careful when you are taking off whatever you are taking off because you can put it back. Also, the way how you are putting the air hammer on you. understand I am going to go let's go in into the into the studio and I am going to show it to you actually here is one little piece see to carving out from stone 
it takes weeks and months. This one I created probably in an hour. So what it is inside of me, I am bringing out with the small scale. And that's the key why I am making sketches in three-dimensional. I am not making pencil drawings. I am making the three-dimensional piece, exactly how it looks like when it is finished. I am following exactly the same shape and I don't make any measurement. I am doing it how I am looking at it. That's why I am creating the piece. I am looking at it and not to making any measurement anymore. Just I am measuring how much bigger is the original. For example, I could show you one piece with the, with the large scale which I made. I am looking for right. Oh, here it is. Here is the hope of the Cancer Institute piece. And this was the piece which I showed to the committee who accepted the piece. And I could show it to you through the poster which is standing in front of the Arthur James, how I followed exactly the same shape. And I am not measuring anymore, just I am measuring how many times is bigger. After I am making and seeing the piece and creating the large one. The reason I am not measuring, because if I am getting involved how big is the skirt or how big is the leg, I would lose the concept. And that's the way how I am making all the markets. Here is the market, for example, the 32 foot high, and here is in small scale. And that's way I am working with my system is no pencil drawing, no different angles. I am making one piece which I am see seeing all in different angles. Oh, this is, this is the fear. This is the emphasis on the face and on the eye. It is giving the expression of the person about how fearful was in 1945. You see, that's why I am selecting the style what I am illustrating. Now here is another piece which is entirely different the style. If we would go into a exhibit, the people wouldn't think this piece is the same hand is doing it what was made of this. This is a abstract piece and this is expressing, this is the title Awakening. She is just woke up and walking out to the sunshine in a summer morning and enjoying the weather and the day, beginning of the day. And that's why it is important to me, the style is what I am illustrating. And here we are having this one, the Holocaust piece. Where is the anguish and the big question, why we perished? Only, again, I would like to show the emphasis on the style of my work. And just the opposite, here is the same team with a modern version we are the living. It is a black and white marble and the yellow star of David is showing who we are. We are in the concentration camp mates in the striped dress which I try to emphasize with the white and black marble which is 
bonded together and bolted together and after I cut it out from the one bulk piece and created that black and white marble. Okay, Moses, Moses I am illustrating in the Old Testament when he's coming down from Mount Sinai and I am illustrating Moses as a human being. I am not illustrating any Bible figure as a meat, a something which never existed. He is a human being and the way how I am thinking it is my favorite human leader of the world because since then we never found one person who are able to put in ten sentences the basic existence of the human race. The Ten Commandment, if we would keep the Ten Commandment, we wouldn't need lawyers, we wouldn't need police, we wouldn't need judges. Everything would be idealistic situation. We wouldn't kill and we would embrace each other. And that's why I believe he was one of the greatest human being leader for the human race because, and he was a great politician too, because he never said, I am saying it to you. He's always saying, God told me to interpret to you his wishes, because otherwise he wouldn't do it. So when he's coming down from the Mount Sinai, and it is very important to me, even the pedestal, I am using and emphasizing where he is walking. That's why it's a rugged stone. Actually, it's a Carrara marble. Only I am emphasizing when he's walking down from Mount Sinai and he is outraged because the people are idling the golden bulls and partying. And he is a human being and he is mad because he was spending his valuable time meditating in the top of the mountains and trying to put a basic foundation of the human race existence and that's why he is so mad when he is spending the time and meantime the people are forgetting it and he is just at rage to wants to break the tablet. That's what I am illustrating with Moses. The ultimate friendship. Again, the meaning of the pedestal, it is emphasizing, it's happened with me in 1943 when I was captured by the Russians and uh, we became prisoner of war and we had a march a five days, four nights march when they didn't give us any food. We didn't have any chance to drink and we were marching on the snow field and one uh, friend of mine wanted to sit down to rest a little bit and it's meant he would froze to death because if you are sitting down in a cold weather you fell asleep and you froze to death or on the end of the column, because the number was important, the guard would shoot you and throw you on the, on the truck. So I didn't want it to happen with him, and I carried him in my shoulder almost a complete day. And that's why I commemorate that piece to him and for that occasion because the humanity and the human side is expressing it and I am these are already the number 13 and I am selling that is number of edition only most of the people who purchased that all of them were buying to somebody else to a friend as a gift the title is the ultimate friendship and I have to tell you that 
in a normal way to thinking a man is having a power to carry another human being in his shoulder. In a normal way I wouldn't figure it out how I had the power to carry a man on the snowfield. Only in a desperate situation sometimes it's uh, giving you strength. God give you strength when you are making an act and you, you are not working and not doing that for preparing yourself. It is just happened in one second and you determined you're going to carry him. Matter of fact, this picture, that piece, I could show it to you. It is in a educating book where they are talking about psychology and how is the how is the human being is acting in certain circumstances which is not a normal circumstances and sometimes you have a strength which you wouldn't have the same strength if it would be a normal circumstances and they are showing this as an example I could show you the book it is a college book and uh, matter of fact there I have that piece also in a different edition and they were calling me to use my work as certain circum circumstances you are having situation which is expressing the humanity and this is my my aim with my work I am dealing with humanity and I am dealing to express a hope of tomorrow. This is a three-dimensional Star of David. In every angle you are seeing the same design as the six-pointed Star of David. And I created a idea what does this mean, the Star of David? Actually, the Star of David is not a six-point star. The Star of David, two triangles. One triangle is representing the Earth. The other triangle, the opposite way, is representing the sky, the he heaven, the oxygen. And the two is submerging into each other and is representing life. That's why I call the Star of David of the mark of life. Because without oxygen, without the earth, without the greenery, without the existence of the sky and the earth, we wouldn't have a living. We wouldn't live. And that's why I call the mark of life the Star of David. The title of this piece also, this is a Karana marble and it was challenged to me. It is a crunching man, a sitting person who has a prayer shawl covering it. Only I didn't want it to bring out the, the human figure. I wanted to bring out the meaning of that pose Actually, the title is The Mourner. And we Jews are mourning a departed person for a week. We are sitting on the ground on, or in a low level and we are spending the time of prayings. And here I didn't want to bring out anything else, just the prayer shawl which is covering the person only the meaning of that body is the most important, is the inside meaning of the meaning of the departed which we are mourning. And that's why I used the hollow is inside, the object is hollow, 
only because the covering, the prayer shawl, is covering the thought of that person. That's why I didn't bring out the inside of the body. I am bringing out the meaning of the pose and meaning of the body. And I created the soft cloth, which is the prayer shawl, is a soft cloth, and I was bringing out Technically, I was trying to make it from the hard, rigid stone a drapes. And that's the, what I wanted to bring out now. Also, the black stripes, which is the design of the prayer shawl, it is not painted. It is cut out, grinded out the marble, and I put it in, in inlaid in epoxy, black epoxy, and after I polished the whole thing together. And that's the meaning of that piece. The title is The Column of Flame, only here I am showing the Cossacks who are in the po pogrom in the 1900, and they are burning the villages and they are driving away the people from the village and they are taking their belongings and they are taking the Torah, the scroll, the Moses five books with them and they are going into the diaspora and they are going to Palestine, they are going to the United States and in Palestine they are building and planting the trees and guarding them. And here are the 1930s and the 40s when the German soldiers are herding the people into the crematoriums. And from the crematoriums, the, on the chimneys, the smoke is coming out. Only the smoke is becoming the Israeli flag. And this way we are showing they didn't die in vain. Now here I am showing the tanks and the people, the Jewish people, actually 18 of them holded up the whole German army in 1943. And here I am showing the Israeli flag and those people who were going away and driven away from their homes here they are standing tall and holding the Torah in their hand and the family is together. So this one is actually the Jews in the 20th century. And I wish to make this in 32 foot high. The 32 foot high figure is coming out. It would be one figure would be four foot, which is two-thirds of life size. And that's I wish to make it only I could dream. And anyway, in my thesis, we need the dreamers and without dreamers there is no reality. And that's, that's my thesis also with my work. We have to dream dream for tomorrow and to dream for the beauty and the life and to embracing each other and respecting each other. That's my aim with my work and that's my aim when I am making Holocaust memorials to speak to the people whenever I am not going to be here.